And it's in the sulky time here. We welcome uh, the older and wiser McDermott brother, John. Uh, uh, Sam, you keep putting a lot of pressure on you here to be humorous and, uh, yeah. and funny. But uh, tell us about, first of all, your decision originally uh, to enter law enforcement. Was there any lure of the horses uh, growing up at all? Um, you know, that was Kevin's thing uh, when we were younger. He, he really was in love with the horses. Um, I always felt that um, I really liked helping people. Uh, I liked the pressure in situations I works really well under uh, you know stressful situations so that that's why I became a police officer and growing up in uh, North Jersey and being Irish it was sort of the way you went and uh, you were recognized by the summit police for uh, preventing a suicide as well right yeah, yeah that was that was one of the the great days I get to have when I was on the job and I was also decorated in both uh, in Sunrise Florida and in uh, Roxbury New Jersey so you know it, it was a great great job and I think any young man that wanted to become a police officer it's a great great career and it's uh, very gratifying did you ever want to uh, pursue maybe a, the, the law enforcement career a little further like the NCI type more investigative things uh, maybe become a federal agent that sort of thing if it wasn't for the disease of race Horses, uh, I would have gone that route, but I, I really, once I started working with the horses, it was just always in the back of my head, and I dreamed and dreamed about it. And I saw so many guys retire from the force and pass away in the first few years, never get to fulfill their dreams outside. Uh, that's that's why I decided. You know, I mentioned it to my wife one day. I thought there was no shot she was going to agree with me, but I told her I really thought I wanted to give it a shot going full time, and she said, "Do what makes you happy," and that's what I did. Well, uh, did you ever put your life in danger? Was your life ever in danger? Did you ever have to pull a gun and... Oh, no, absolutely. You know, right? uh, sort of especially thing? down in Florida. Uh, I had several situations where there was uh, shooting involves. Uh, I had one situation where a gentleman had just killed uh, the boyfriend of his estranged wife and wow. had a shotgun held to her. And between me and another officer, we had to disarm him without shooting at him because of the situation where the wife was. And uh, that was... You look back on it afterwards it was real hairy but you know what that's what's great if you're really good under pressure you make the right decisions and uh, how does that translate to your career with the horses being under pressure and the decisions and that sort of thing or is it just more relaxing and uh, a lot less stressful I, I think there's a difference between like uh, me and Kevin have a lot of things that we're common in and then I don't stress out I really don't I don't um, I'm so blessed because I have such great partners uh, that I deal with. My horses race bad. My guys understand horses race bad. And I own part of all these horses with them. And there's really no stress. You know, I go to bed every night happy and I just dream about what the next day is going to bring. Um, I'm very fortunate. Kevin runs a stable where he has owners that they do put pressure on him. And listen, Francis spends a lot of money. And when yeah. you spend that kind of money, you better do good. You know, I'm fortunate enough that I got guys that know I'm working my butt off and I'm going to do what's best for us every day and uh, it's, it's, it's there's no pressure whatsoever. Well you've had a few horses put you on the map like Hurricane Billy G uh, who has basically been uh, an inspiration for your Hurricane Stable and uh, the greatest horse you ever owned. Uh, uh, one here in 154 and three as a three-year-old back in 2004. Quarter carat a pace finalist. You also had another pace finalist in Real Mean Art as well but uh, it all goes back to Hurricane Billy G doesn't it? Hurricane Billy G is everything to me in this game. I uh, I love that horse. I mean, he gets me choked up every time I think about him. Everything he did for me, and uh, to lose him out here was the worst day of my life and the best day. He's just, uh, he's the greatest creature that ever lived. Well, we'll uh, look at Hurricane King Cole here. It could be your next great thing. Uh, how did uh, you get Hurricane King Cole, and were you pleased with the way he developed as a two-year-old as we look at his qualifier here? Uh, I can't be any happier with... Uh, uh, King Cole. He's just, he's a wonderful, wonderful horse. He has the attributes of uh, Billy G, like where he just loves to race. And he, he's matured so much. And, uh, you know, I was sort of offended last year when so many people thought that he was just a speedball that had to go down the road and he had no manners and he couldn't do things. He's, uh, he's matured so much. And the way I ended up with him, we bought him at Harrisburg. And I went to Harrisburg to buy one horse that was Hurricane Billy G's sister. Yeah. And Chris Ryder outbid me. And I tried to buy it off a of Chris afterwards and he said he wasn't interested and I went and looked at the rest of the Cam's card trucks that I had tried to buy earlier in the year and lo and behold there's King Cole and once again you know Billy G looking out for me for ten thousand dollars right ten thousand right not bad uh, two hundred and sixty one thousand dollars later uh, give me your assessment of his two-year-old season uh, some of the highlights uh, and how he's come back 
his highlights were uh, were like he raced in the Breeders' Crown. That was my my happiest moment. It wasn't even the final. It was the elimination that we were able to race him from last, and he finished third, and he was phenomenal. But it was the job of going from being a speedball every week up in Canada. We brought him home, I reprogrammed him, I took him to Freehold, I qualified him behind my old 12-year-old, then I took him to Poconos, qualified him behind my old 12-year-old, taught him how to race off the pace, and then there he came out a different horse on the other end. And uh, when I put him away last year, he was a very smart colt that was nice and strong, and he came back twice the man he was. Yeah, he you, was just a beast. You're quoted as saying he's come back as a man. Now, you also alluded to some vision issues. Uh, you're tinkering with his bridle. What's that all about? He's, he's got a little bit of cuckoo in him. He, uh, he, he's kind of like you, right? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you know, there, there's no rhyme or reason. He, he'll come off this. He grew up here in the first place. This was the track he was broke on. This is the track he learned on. And for some reason, he comes through the last turn at the Meadowlands and locks on the right line. I take him to Yonkers, and when you go from a big track like the Meadowlands to a small track like Yonkers, you're supposed to get on the line more because it's a tighter turn. Right. He doesn't touch the line there. It makes no sense at all. He raced in Canada, never touched the line. There's just something about this last turn here at the Meadowlands. I always think there's something he's seen, something that makes him mad. His first baby race, he tried to run to the paddock on Yannick. And I think he just is always remembering Remembering that. Maybe you and should consult with your brother. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> well, if I put that ugly guy standing out there, he'll definitely run in because it'll scare him enough. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, Gaelic Thunder won three of four here, uh, fresh off the claim. How's uh, Gaelic Thunder doing? Gaelic Thunder's been awesome. You know, what's very tough for us right now is that uh, our top claimer here is the 30 claimer. I had him remove him out of here, and it was the last thing I wanted to do. He's, uh, he's a five-year-old stud that was loved as a young horse by Brian McGee, and I was fortunate enough to get him off of uh, Casey Coleman, uh, who had him a short time, but he's so much fun to have in the barn. He's the screaming, hollering horse that just is so happy, but he has no mean in him. But he, he's added like such a nice uh, twist to the stable to have an older racehorse that really loves what he's doing. Okay, we look forward to seeing a little more of Gaelic uh, Thunder. Uh, how have you mapped out the sophomore season for Hurricane King Cole? What's the big goal here? Pace, North American Cup first? The, the most important thing for me right now is the North, uh, the North American Cup. Getting him ready for that is everything. I'm not going to abuse him. I'm not going to let anybody front end him. Um, even next week he goes over to the Rooney for 306000 right, yeah. And that's another race. You know, I, I understand that's nice money, but in two weeks after that it's $1.5 million. And that's, that's what I'm looking at. And that's what my goal is, to go get that. How about some two-year-olds? Uh, what, what about uh, the rest of your stable this year? Yeah, this was the, the first year I spent uh, about 140, 160,000 on five yearlings, and uh, it's my most disappointing crop. <laughs> Luckily, oh, I got one that. very nice one sent from my friend in Florida. Um, he sent me up a really nice colt, uh, Word Power, and uh, I've trained him now a few times in 2.5. He seems to do everything right. He's a Western ideal out of Lush Limbaugh, and uh, I really think he's going to be a very, very nice colt. All right, well, Hurricane King Cole, we're hoping uh, he does good things for you uh, in. Uh, 2012 and beyond. No, he will. I, I truly, I know he's going to do it right. He wants to be a great horse, and he's got all the right things to do it. As always, thanks for joining us, uh, John McDermott. You're a delight, and uh, best of luck to you. Thank you, Kenny. All right, Bob Hollywood Hayden up next with a preview of tonight's action.